Coinciding with the centenary anniversary of the Battle of the Somme, my mate Jonesy linked up with the Red Ladder Theatre Company to perform in a play. That's right, over 40 members of the community teamed up, musicians, singers, dancers came together to perform in the show, including our very own Jamie Jones Buchanan with his debut of the show. Let's take a look into the inside of what went on. This guy here has looked after me for the last 10 weeks. Um, in fact, one of the really important ones, actually, the, one of the best lessons I want to learn throughout this whole thing. A bit like when you play rugby. Uh, last night, right, I missed a complete line. Right, and uh, by the time I'd even realised, I thought, oh, what are we going to do? And I could usually think quick. He'd already covered it, carried it on, and just play just went on. And obviously, you couldn't watch it and didn't even notice it. And uh, it reminded me when I'm playing, the best teams that I've ever played with are the ones where somebody makes an error, somebody else cleans up for you. And it's not, not always the best players and the, you know, the most talented, it's the ones that look after each other, because that's what superheroes do, look after each other. Just, but that's yeah. it, if I did same as well, if I fluffed a line, I know this kid here is going <laughs> to save it for us. Try, so it's... try my best. <laughs> <laughs> we're in our costume, it's Tech Week, so we're all trying on our costumes, and I'm with the two main women in my theatrical life. This is uh, Leah, who Hi. plays... Tara, my sister, in the show, and this is my mum, Susan, real name Emma, and they've looked after me for the last <laughs> ten weeks or so. Uh, Leah, your local girl. Yes. Um, Lee's lads, obviously, is a local community player. Mm -hmm. Are you looking forward to this show and inviting some, maybe some of your friends, to local community along? Yeah, yeah, definitely. All my family is going to come and see it, hopefully. And um, yeah, I'm really excited. I can't wait to get on stage now. It's time now. <laughs> it's time, we're all ready, yeah. we're all mad for it. Yeah. Now, me and you have a lot of arguments, and it's yeah. feeling characteristic because I'm not a confrontational person apart from when I want picture calls. <laughs> uh, but when she shouts at me, she looks real, and I get genuinely scared. I'm not as big and horrible as I might look when I'm shouting at you, am I? No, but you are very scary when you boom your voice. <laughs> it's like, ah! I've been there! This was the ultimate sacrifice! How many lads from Basra, Damascus, and Gaza? You want to talk about sacrifice? The rehearsals have been great. You know, we're a company of about 40, including directors and everyone else, and it's just been such a good time. It's, it's really been a laugh. And um, I mean, having JJB with us as well has added an extra element, and I think we've learnt a lot from him, actually, because just that sort of dedication and taking on such a, a huge role and something that's so different in his life. You know, when, when he first came to us... Um, we were sent away, the three of us, to do our little scene, right, go and have a practice. And, and he said to us, oh, you know, I've never done this before. I mean, Leah sort of looked at each other and went, oh, OK. And uh, he was, uh, he, he said, so, yeah, what do you want me to do? And we were like, well, why don't you just walk on and just say, oh, how do I look, you know, and this. And he was like, oh, OK. So he did it and he was like, what do you think? And me and Leah just looked at each other and went, yeah, he'll do. He'll do it. <laughs> yeah, he can, he can do it, yeah. <laughs> 100 years and still we can't forget. We must never forget. And I worry about Liam. Colour Sergeant Liam Crawford, my great big soldier boy. Those lads died for something they believed in. Something I believe in. We should honour them. I've been surprised by JJ Beat every rehearsal just because, just because of what he brings into the room. Just that sort of um, self-confidence and that personality. There is peace in the world when there that a rugby player would would just adapt so quickly and so easily to the mad world that is a rehearsal world because they do ask you to do some pretty crazy things but JJB just went for it 100% on the first day doesn't mind, doesn't care about making a fool of himself and has yeah just been been a, a great company member and actually uh, something something that um, that we've really learned from JJB um, is um, if the if the going gets tough Get a pot of tea. Yeah, have a pot, of, <laughs> have a pot of tea. <laughs> Don't worry about here. Come on, let's get out of here. What you need is a cup of tea. No, it's, it honestly has been really exciting. It was really exciting to hear that we were playing with, a, with, with um, acting with a rugby player, and it's just been amazing. Like 
really interesting and yeah, really great. Yeah, I might have to get a membership now. <laughs> yeah. Lisa I know some membership. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's been particularly up this year. Obviously, we've had some uh, adverse times as as a team at Leeds Rhinos, bottom of the league, and uh, it's been really tough. And as a Leeds fan, as a Leeds lad, as a Leeds player, I wanted to invest a lot of energy, everything I've got into trying to reverse some of that. But this this play has been a, a welcome diversion, if you like, for me. Uh, and not a diversion that takes my mind off of rugby, it actually enhances it. Because I come here, I uh, I get some, some spirit off these guys, some enthusiasm, uh, and I learn something new, get some perspective, like you just said there, some of his friends got a ward and, and there's a possibility they might come back. When we lose a rugby game, you know, we get up on a Saturday morning or a Monday morning, whatever it is, and we've still got a chance to turn it around, do something about it. And it really puts that into perspective and it's given me energy being here to take to my Leeds Rhinos players. And I've, I've done that quite a lot this year and, and that's probably one of the most gratifying things about this experience. Rob Burrow actually uh, expressed his desire. He said he loved doing art and theatre when he was at um, school. He used to love performing arts and he's got a bit of <laughs> Michael Jackson and he loves it and he loves performing on stage and uh, it'd, it'd be brilliant something like Seven Dwarfs or uh, <laughs> something like Lord of the Rings you know, I could call them <laughs> um, so no honestly seriously I think Rob Burrow's really keen to do a bit of acting and uh, I said one or two of them actually you should come, if I ever get invited again or you know, somebody should be said today go do some auditions Take a couple of players and I don't know, we never know what's next. Welcome to Rob Burrow's Off the Cuff Movie Review. Now this episode we're reviewing Jamie Jones's play Leeds Lads because he didn't sort us out a cinema pass. What do you think to it, Cuff? Well, the uh, the the actual play itself was quite a surprise for me. Um, I think a lot of us boys got in there and w- wasn't sure what to expect, but um, he did quite a... Um, a great job, Jonesy did, for his first uh, debutant on the stage. Yeah, I mean, for me it was really good on the history. Um, obviously, you know, way before we were born, but it gave a little bit of a flashback into what what it was like. But speaking about Jonesy personally, I thought it was um, absolutely brilliant. Like he does, he, he tips his heart into everything he does. And he, if I didn't know Jonesy, I wouldn't know he wasn't, you know, he wasn't the actor there, he was, he was a rugby player, so. Granddad then, Len Wilson, DCN. There. And that's your great grandma, Ada. You went through hell for this country, mind you. She did too. Well, come on, where's my dress? And you better get your glad rags on us. We're going to be late. I'm not going. Show some respect. Respect. To be fair, I'm one of those type of guys that can go to one of these uh, to these plays, to a cinema, watch a movie, and I really buy into to, to the theme, to the storyline, and whatnot. And, a lot, of, a lot of time there you actually for, forgot that Jonesy is one of the players that yep. we play with every week and I think that's credit to him as an actor and um, you know, and how they really brought that, um, that play to life. Um, like you said, a lot of great history to be learnt when we went out to, uh, to watch the play and um, you know, the fact that you could uh, absorb a lot of that history and, and get a good understanding from just watching the play itself is what, um, what made it so, so special, the play itself. The, the highlight for me, I think, was I was sat in about row six, but the, the, the people in front of me all had rain max on mm. and umbrellas because of Jonesy's spitting when he was talking. Um, quite a few people were, were like they'd been on the log flume, something like that. So, <laughs> thankfully, I was just sat back just enough, comfortable enough, and just nice and dry and uh, able to enjoy I the play. I did notice that a lot of them got caught up right up in the end of his beard, too, didn't they? They sat right on the tip there of his big, beard there. A big blob there for mm. at least three scenes, weren't they? I could imagine, I could imagine that would have made it quite, quite a hard process for, the, uh, for the, his fellow cast members to actually stay in character whilst having to like stare down the barrel of Jonesy's face, which is hard enough as it is. But then to actually, you know, you know when you got you got someone with like a booger or something on their face booger. or like a, uh, a I don't know, like an odd mole with hair yeah. coming from it. Well, that's that's the same that's the same um, it's, like, it's, like, it's like talking to Kyle Lula, ain't it? You try not to <laughs> to look at the mole when it's, it's you a, talk to him but mole mole. Yeah, yeah. Mole. Yeah, exactly. I think what's on everybody's lips is cough is why are you holding a ticket with chewing gum on it? To be fair, this is just how I received it. I mean, <laughs> I thought that was part of the. Uh, I thought it was part of the visual when you got the ticket. You know, like those three D pop out yeah. cards and things. Yeah. But to be fair, I just think this is sat in the back of uh, Jonesy's red um, Royal Mail van, <laughs> and it looks like it's got plenty of coffee stains in it too. So I know the, I know the guy's been you know stressed out all week, getting ready to to get ready for this uh, play. So I 
think that could possibly have just been, you know, a bit of uh, <laughs> shrapnel, maybe. <laughs> shrapnel. A bit of shrappers from his mouth. And so we drink.